Good morning. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter. And once again, we gather together to worship, to praise God, to share another sofa sermon, because as a country, we are still locked down and unable to gather together for public worship. But we are now a community, the community of St. George's and a community of folks scattered around the world. And together we will praise God this day. Let us see you this day, O God. Come to us as light. Let us hear you this day, O God. Come to us as truth. Let us sense your presence, O God. Come to us as love. Come and let us worship God. We will rejoice in God our Savior. Together we say, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday of Easter. Threefold God of Love, you invite us to abide in you. May we follow the Spirit of Truth, so that through us your commanding love may speak to the heart of the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, for those of you who were with us last week, you might recall that Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room. He had just done an extraordinary, actually mind-blowing thing. This Jesus, this one whom his disciples came to believe was, was Messiah, knelt down in the dusty floor and in an act of intimacy, in an act of service, washed the feet of his disciples. And then he gave them a commandment. He said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Everyone will know that you follow me 
if you love one another. Then he went on to say, listen, don't, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Don't let any of this stuff rattle you. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. He was telling them that the road to the kingdom, the road to abundant life, the road to the Father went through him. Okay, listen, we need to understand this. We need to understand that he was speaking in that upper room to his closest friends who were about to have their hearts broken. They were about to be devastated. They were about to witness his arrest, his trial, and his execution. He was speaking to them, but John was writing for a different group altogether. See, John was writing for a group who understood what it meant to be devastated, who understood what it meant to have their hearts broken. He was writing to a group of Christians at the end of the first century into the second century who had witnessed the devastation and destruction of Jerusalem. They had witnessed their temple, the place that they believed God resided. They had watched that torn to the ground, raised by the Roman army in the Judean Roman War of 66 to 70 AD. It was a brutal, nightmarish, stomach-turning war. It was a war that even by Roman standards had a degree of violence and humiliation and personal violation that was beyond the pale. So a group of people who were about to be devastated, a group of people who were devastated and living with despair. To these two groups of people, Jesus said, listen, I am not going to leave you orphaned. Doesn't sound like much. Those are powerful words. Remember, remember that for the people of Israel, going back to the book of Deuteronomy, orphans, widows, and immigrants were those who were considered to be the most marginalized in society and in particular orphans, because orphans had no home. They had no mother and father to care for them. They had no one to feed them. And worse, they had no one to love them. Their present was awful and they had no prospects for the future. I will not leave you orphaned. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you without love and support and care. Those are incredible words. And, and, and this is how it, it all worked. He said to them, listen, if you love me, if you really love me, then keep my commandments. And, and remember in John, Jesus only gave his disciples two commandments. Love God, love one another. So he's saying to them, if you really love me, then trust God, love God, and, and, and reach out to one another, care for one another, support one another, love one another. And, and here's what's going to happen. The Father is going to send you another advocate. Did you hear that? The Father is going to send you another advocate. See, Jesus was the first advocate. Jesus was the first to show humanity what God looked like. Jesus was the first to show humanity what God's love, what God's mercy, what God's forgiveness looked like. Jesus was the human face of God. And he said to them that, that, that the Father is going to send you another 
advocate. Uh, the Greek word parakletos, uh, we translate advocate. It, it has a few meanings. It, it can mean someone who speaks on your behalf in, in a legal case. Uh, it's not what it's about here. W the meaning that makes the most sense here is someone who comes alongside you in times of distress or danger to give you comfort, to strengthen you, to empower you. So for those who were about to experience heartache, for the first century Christians who already had, he said that the Father was going to send them one who was going to give them the strength and the courage that they needed to carry on. Okay, listen, maybe I've been sitting on this couch too long or maybe just long enough. I'll let, let you decide. But I got an image that, that I want to share with you. I, I, I want you to go in your mind to every movie or every television show that you've ever seen in which there was a Greek wedding. Maybe you've been to a Greek wedding and, and, and you know that at some point during the event, the guests, most often just the men, but not always, they join hands together and in a circle, they dance. And, and, and as the dance goes on, the energy gets higher, the air becomes electric and the room fills with unbridled joy. I think, I think that what Jesus is saying to his disciples, what John is saying to the first century Christians and what they are saying to you and to me today is that when we love, when we reach out to others, when we come alongside others, to give them strength and courage. We join hands with the Father and with Jesus and with the Spirit in a life-changing, life-giving, amazing dance of love. And that dance empowers us to continue coming alongside others, to continue to support and comfort, to continue to love. And in doing that, we draw others into the dance. See, it's all about love. It's all about relationship. It's all about the dance. It's all about the dance. In our COVID traumatized world, where isolation and separation are fraying nerves and sucking the joy out of life, at a time in which our world and our country lives with uncertainty, both medically and economically. I, I believe that now, more than ever, now more than ever, our family, our friends, our neighbors, our community need someone to come alongside them to give them strength, to give them hope, to give them courage. I believe that our world desperately needs to be in relationship. And I don't mean Zoom or FaceTime. I mean honest to God, one-on-one, -on -one, face-to-face relationship. 
And for the time being, that may end up being from behind a mask. We have no idea that the, the future is pretty unclear at this point. Our steps are going to be tentative. But the need, the need for love, the need for community, the need for support, the need for relationship is very clear. Now, now listen, listen to the words of Jesus. These come immediately after our passage for today because as it generally does, the lectionary ends in the wrong place. But listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. Listen to what John was saying to the first century church and listen to what they're both saying to you and to me today. Peace, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. This dance, this dance of love can bring us peace when we most need it can give us courage when we most need it, can make us whole when we feel that our hearts are breaking. So here's to a dancing God. My friends, join hands, join the dance. Amen.
together, we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Loving God, we thank you for calling us into a relationship with you and setting us in the world you love. Through our prayers, we bring to you our doubts and fears, our joys and our concerns, and our deepest longings for your world. Reconciling God, we pray for our family and friends, those far away and those close by, any who are estranged from us and those whom we depend upon daily. Where our relationships are strained, bring understanding and new possibility. Bless and protect relationships that are joyful and life-giving. Guiding God, we pray for public officials, politicians, and all who serve the public good day by day, and especially as we confront the COVID-19 pandemic. Guide each one to uphold standards of good service above personal gain. Where they experience tension between their faith and their public roles, give them wisdom to make faithful decisions and courage when those decisions are unpopular. Caring God, we pray for the people we encounter every day, both those who are shining lights in our communities and those whose lights have yet to be discovered. Help us be respectful of every neighbor and treat each person we meet with kindness. Healing God, we pray for those who are suffering from illness or chronic conditions, for those in grief or loneliness, and for any who feel frustrated or overwhelmed by what they face. Move in their lives with your healing grace and show them signs of your presence and compassion in life-giving ways. Faithful God, your spirit has worked in the world throughout all generations. We thank you that we belong to you in this generation. We pray for lifelong believers and for those whose faith is new. May your church benefit from the wisdom of the experienced and the vibrancy of those beginning their journey. Help us work together in hope so that our witness to your purposes and promises will invite others to discover life in you. And now we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our risen Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever.